All right, here we go. Special edition of Knicks Fan TV. CP here on the check-in. Tonight's guest, he covers MMA for ESPN. He's the host of the Ariel Elwani MMA show. Also co-host an MMA show with Daniel Cormier. We're going to talk Knicks and we're going to preview a big card, UFC 259. I'm a UFC fan and a Knicks fan as well, obviously. So joining us is... Ariel Elwani in the building. Ariel, thanks for joining me, man. How's it going? My man, the franchise. It's great to be here. I'm a big fan, like I told you before we uh, we recorded. In fact, my first nickname uh, when I started in media was the franchise. I was Ariel ah. the franchise. So I dubbed CFMB myself the franchise. No R. I okay. dubbed it the franchise, but I hate okay, it. Okay, my bad. It. No, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, so so I, I guess maybe I just sort of willed that into existence, yeah. and I felt like we had a... Uh, a common bond there, but, uh, you know, sort of play on the same words. Uh, I like, I like the name. I love everything that you do. I like what you stand for. Great appearance with Max on his show. Yeah. Way to represent my man. I had to so. get him out of there. He's a traitor, man. He's a turncoat. Man. The fan base has wanted me to get at him for years. I had him in my sights, man. And I got the opportunity. So well done. You yeah. represented. Yeah. And I know everyone it. was very proud of you. Appreciate it, man. Uh, on you, you know, born and raised in Montreal, you're in the backyard of the Montreal Canadiens, the famed hockey team. You got the Expos there. How did you stumble on the Knicks? I mean, obviously, this is pre-Raptors, but how did you yes. stumble on the Knicks as your basketball team? Yeah, so it's uh, it's 1990. I'm, uh, I'm eight years old. I have two older brothers. We were all big basketball fans. Um, weirdly enough, we were bigger basketball fans than hockey fans. And everyone back home, you know, first and foremost is a hockey fan. But for some reason, we just loved the NBA. And I remember walking into a shoe store with my brother. And uh, he tells me like, hey, you, you, you should get you should get those shoes over there. And I know nothing. I'm just going to listen to my older brother. Well, they happen to be Ewing's. Mm. Now, you'll know that, uh, you know, the Ewing shoes back in the day, as much as we love number 33, they weren't, you know, they weren't as cool as the Jordans. Yeah, let's right, just put right. it that way. Right? Yeah, they were yeah. a little clunky. They were, they just yeah. weren't as, as, as cool as, as MJ's shoes. So I bought them, mm-hmm. but I knew nothing of Patrick Ewing. I'm eight years old, mm-hmm. but you know, I wanted to know who's this guy Ewing that, you know, I'm wearing his shoes. And I remember just watching him and watching early nineties Knicks and falling in love. And when I say falling in love, like, it was borderline unhealthy how much I loved that team, man. I they were my favorite team growing up in any sport. Patrick Ewing, my favorite athlete of all time. Uh, Charles Oakley, a close second. Uh, Starks, Xavier McDaniel, nineteen ninety two, going in, yeah. in in Jordan's face, all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we those. I, I remember crying the first time I like ever was affected by sports was 92 game seven against the bulls. I really thought they'd pull up the upset yeah. in the second round. Yeah. And my brothers, my older brothers were bulls fans. So it was oh, horrible. They made man. me feel so much worse. 93. We know what happened. 94 was horrible. 95 hurt me just as much. Cause that was my guy missing the finger roll. Yeah. Like it was pain. Yeah. It was pain. And you man. expected them to get right back. You know, that of was course. the thing with 95. You expected them to get past the paces, get right back to the, you know, yep. get through and get to the finals. But Oh man, it's hard. hard. So there was there was a lot, and and they shaped my my adolescence. They shaped um, my life in high school. All I cared about was Knicks basketball. Yeah. Number thirty three. I wore number thirty three uh, playing high school basketball. I copied Ewing's game. Like I, I'm a six foot Jewish kid, <laughs> you know, shooting uh, baseline fadeaways and like holding my shorts like he did and wearing knee pads and things like that. Like, I just love this man. And I'll never forget March 11th, 1995. The mm-hmm. first time I ever went to the garden, I begged my dad to take me. And uh, we, we went to a game against the Supersonics. We mm-hmm. went to New York for the weekend. They were playing the Supersonics on a Saturday night, March 11th, 1995. And just being in the arena and and feeling the energy and, and I, I got, to, I went to, um, to Crosby's yeah, yeah Crosby's. the jersey yeah. store yep. yeah yep, and I yep. got an Oakley jersey and nice. you have to understand like this is pre-Raptors no one cared about NBA basketball in yeah. Canada like yeah. the, you could not get any coverage of it whatsoever and so right. to be at the Mecca it was just some, I get chills just talking about all this yeah. stuff so that's kind of how it all started for me same here man and and it's all those elements that make you a fan right it, it's the passion and tenacity that the players like Patrick Ewan brought to the game you know a leader and, and just leaving it all out there on the floor and then knee pads and the ice packs and all that. Then you take the energy in the garden, you know, what they brought to the city, what they brought to that arena. And then the storylines of all the rivalries, man, it was unscripted. 
played out right in front of your eyes right. and all of that just you know it, it this is what made me a fan now and and surviving the last 20 years of doom and gloom is it's that feeling because you you want to recreate that even Absolutely. though the team may not ever embody that style again you know the game is changing you just want that feeling again you want that well, feeling again man. the jersey represents all of that yeah um and i thought once they traded ewing Maybe it would change. It never really changed. Obviously, there have been ups and downs. Mm -hmm. 100% there have been moments where I was like, man, screw these guys. Why do I care so much about this? Mm -hmm. Because they break your heart. Mm -hmm. But in the 90s, um, those, I mean, I remember, you know, Houston's shot. Like, I don't know if I've ever been happier about anything in my life. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. just jumping um, up and down. I mean, LJ's four-point play. Mm -hmm. One of my most underrated favorite moments of all time as a Knicks fan, and I don't think it gets talked about enough, mm -hmm. game seven, 2000, second round, okay. he yep. on the road, Ewing gets the dunk mm -hmm. over morning. Morning tries to go for the steal. Remember that with yeah. like a minute yeah. left? Yeah. Ewing's last great play. His, his last they, great play, man. Yep. Take the heat on the road for the third straight year. Like that, the 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 the, the emotion that I felt, like yeah. I was crying. Yeah. Because my guy did it, you know. And so this is why we're a fan. This is why we love them so much. And and this is why this this season has been so much fun um, up until this point because you know we're starting to get those emotions back, those yeah, feelings absolutely, back. Absolutely, man. Yeah, that's it. And and you mentioned the X Man and that interview of all the player interviews I've done. That is by far the most watched interview we've for ever real. done live recorded we've taken clips of that you know people always want to know why did x-man leave why did x-man yes. leave and he kicked the interview off right then and there and told us the whole story then it we we did the interview around the time the last dance was coming out so we went through that 92 series and oh Sick. you talk about goosebumps i'm getting it right now man but the yep. x-man interview was well received by the fans they loved it that was one of the first times that I, I learned about the business of sports, right? Because yeah, yeah. he was such a big part of that 92 team. And then all of a sudden, I think he's, what is he playing in, uh, in Boston? Mm -hmm. I'm he like, what, Boston. what is, yeah, what is this? Yeah, like, yeah. this was our guy. He went in Jordan's face. Like yeah. he had the, the, the chutzpah to go in Jordan's face. Mm -hmm. That 92 team was so much fun because no one thought that they would take the yeah. Bulls to seven games. And so, yeah, I'll never, I'll never forget watching 94 game seven. I'll never forget Marv Albert saying, it is clear that Pat Riley does not have any faith in Hubert Davis after all those mm. misses by John Bye, Starks, who I'll yeah. defend till this day. Yeah. And then I remember Hubert Davis hitting a three with like a minute and a half. And I'm like, why did they put him in earlier? Like, <laughs> these are the moments that stick with us, right? Yeah. It's it's just great stuff, man. It I love is, everything man. about the Knicks. And uh, and like I said, you know, there, there have definitely been moments where I felt down and sometimes it's hard to defend them. But when I mm. think back to those 90s Knicks, and a little bit in the 2000s, very, very early on, that 2000 series was a great one. Nothing makes me happier as a, as a sports fan. Big time, big time. Now, part of that 2000 team, you had Tom Thibodeau as an assistant coach on that stand. Legend. On the, on the Jeff Van Gundy. He's where he's taking us now. We're making progress. You know, you look at Julius Randle's season, uh, all-star, probably in the conversation for most improved, and just his whole change of attitude and, and really embracing the city and, and embracing that role of being the guy in New York. You're starting to feel that. Um, what's been your impressions of this team at, at the halfway mark? I wanted them to hire Tom when he left Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, I was disappointed that he went to Minnesota. He's an East Coast guy. He's a former Knicks assistant. He's a basketball lifer. Like he doesn't have a family or anything. This guy just lives and breathes basketball. Mm -hmm. And they made one bad hiring after the next. Was not a fan of the Derek Fisher hiring. Yeah, was not a fan of the Fisdale hiring. And this is not, you know, I, I've said it on the record, not a fan of the Hornacek hiring. Mm -hmm. I'm one of these guys, like I, I feel like, I feel like the Knicks are, are a family and, and you either get it or you don't. And I like, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I think Wally is great on MSG. Mm -hmm. It still kind of bugs me. He never played for the Knicks. I'm like, how could you talk about the Knicks? You, you're not a former Nick. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah. And he's great. It I took me a while to get Hunter used to him too, man. It took me a while to get used to Wally. He's not a role, former man. Nick. Like it, it pissed me off that they would never even interview Patrick. Yeah. You know, they wouldn't yeah. even give him that chance. Yeah. And so I, you know, for, for the longest time, I wanted Jeff to come back. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the Phil Jackson hiring. I know he's a former Nick, but to me, you know, he's the Bulls and Lakers uh, as a coach and as an executive, I didn't want him to come. Um, and so all these feelings and, and finally they made the right calls. Like, yes. Okay. We get the basketball life for mm -hmm. We're not getting the sexy pick. We're not getting the former right. player. We're putting, we're getting a guy who's put in the time, who's had the results, who has succeeded um, and has turned franchises around. This is great. So, I, I said, you know, ESPN asked me 
um, to make a bold prediction. Mm -hmm. And and I did it for the app. So it's Mm -hmm. on camera for this coming season. And I said, the Knicks are going to win over 30 games. And I don't think a lot of people said that before this season. I had 26. I had 26, bro. I'm not going to lie. I had 20. Vegas had 22. I said 26 based on the fact that they won 21 last year. Right. I said, uh, you know, incremental. They'll be better. I didn't expect the defense to come around this way. And that me neither. Think, Listen, I'll be honest. Me neither. I was just trying to be optimistic. <laughs> yeah. I didn't expect this out of Julius. I'll be honest. Me neither. I, I did expect big things from RJ. Mm. I believe in RJ. I'm a little biased with fellow RJ as Canadian, well because Toronto. fellow Canadian, you know I mean? my guy, yeah, yeah, for sure. Rowan Barrett, his father, the man. Um, but I just believe that if you have a proper leader and a proper coaching staff and you got a guy like Tom in there, I do believe that great things are going to happen. And, and this has been phenomenal. I mean, it's just been so much fun yeah. to see them dig deep, have heart, play together, you know, be, be, be proud to be Knicks players. Uh, I don't know if you read that Julius Randall piece in the players tribune. Have you um, read that I, yet? That's next. After this interview, I'm going to read it. Dude, yeah. Watch that good. and and wait for the goosebumps, yeah, especially yeah. with the last line. Like this guy wants to be here and he wants to be a leader. So it's been phenomenal. My only, my only, uh, you know, my only complaint I wish the garden was rocking, man. Yeah. I, I, you know, could you imagine some of these games? Could you imagine that Bucks game yeah. earlier this season yeah. with the fans yeah. there? Oh, sure. it would have been amazing, but For it'll sure. come. It'll come. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even, you know, being in the building, I was at the Kings game and, you know, oh, 2000 sick. people is very quiet, is very low key, but the energy was still there. And even in that limited capacity, the crowd was still into it and very much excited, excited when Frank came in the game and Kevin Knox, or, you know, quickly went off that night as well. Alec Burks is fourth quarter. So even in is a it limited, pain limited, to get in, like what do you have to do to get to the game um you have to present a covid test and then after okay. that you get right in barclays that's I think it they test you twice but msc they don't test you twice you just have so to all you have to it. do is get a test get the result and you show yeah. that when you walk within in within 72 hours you show that and then i think they make you sign a waiver um some sort of waiver on a tablet and then and then you go right in yeah sick all right that's not too bad yeah they make you keep your mask on while you're seated unless like sure. you're eating and drinking but it's very very relaxed and low-key other than that I would imagine it's all the hardcores there, right? Like yeah. it's probably it's it's none of the businessmen, the tourists no, no, for the no. most part, right? And you could hear you could hear it get hardcore, man, on the referees, <laughs> on on the opponents, <laughs> loud, loud and direct, man. So it was I want to experience time. that. Yeah, that's awesome. It, it was that was a great time. game to go to as well. Yeah, it was a good game, definitely a good game to go to. Now the trade deadline is coming up. We're a couple yep. weeks away from the trade deadline. A lot of talk, a, a lot of fantasy, you know, Bradley Beal and, and Oladipo and Drummond. Mm. Where, do, where do you want to go, man? Is there any I, move you, you, you feel like you want to make with this team this year? So I, I was in favor of the D Rose trade. I know mm. a lot of people, I, I was cautiously optimistic. I just felt mm. like they needed that veteran presence. I felt like they needed a bit of an upgrade at uh, point guard. I, I was worried that it would affect our guy IQ. Mm. I, you know, I, I, I have... Uh, Big aspirations for him, like mm-hmm. everyone else. He totally got robbed. That rising stars yeah, yeah. nonsense. What we t- I mean, come they on. They put the Andre Hunter on there. He hasn't played in weeks. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, w- I would argue quickly is front runner for rookie of the year. Right. Can't make the freaking you know rising stars, yeah. but alas, I digress. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to see them. Look, it's funny when people say you know oh rebuild, rebuild, rebuild. I feel like we've been rebuilding for twenty years. Mm-hmm. So yes, there's a part of me that wants to see them in the playoffs and go on a run. But now, you know, like this is almost like we're going back to 2010 when we had this, the pieces before the mellow trade, which I was in favor of. I just want to see them let this play out. Yeah. So if you're going to make a small move here or there, sure, you feel like you can upgrade. Sure. But to blow this up for a Bradley Beal, by the way, with all due respect to Bradley Beal, like what does he want? You know what I mean? Like, That's you fair. know, with, with, with the Wizards and with John Wall and some pretty good teams, like how far have they gone? It's right. not like he's going to come in there and change, you know, the fortunes of the franchise. Andre Dummett, same thing. No. So I don't want to see them get rid of. Barrett, for sure not. No. For sure not. Randall, none of these guys. Yeah. Small move here and there, fine. But I kind of, I like this little engine that could. And I want to see for this season, whether or not this this group of underdogs can do something. Mm-hmm. All right, they make it to the playoffs. I don't know about you. I'll be very happy. Mm-hmm. And then come off season with all that salary cap, you know, uh, money. Then we can, you know, take it to the next step. But I don't want to see them blow. Like, let's let's see this. Let's have see fun with through. these guys. See you know what through, I mean? Man. Yeah. I don't want to blow this thing up. Yeah. No way. I agree with you, man. I think to me they're they're far and away exceeding at my expectations, and so to me this is house money. Whatever happens, whether they miss the playoffs or make it to me, this has been a successful season. When you look at Julius, when you look at guys like RJ, like quickly coming onto the scene, Mitch on the defensive end, his improvements as well. I don't want to see them blow that up. I want to see them continue building chemistry because you've seen, especially with RJ and Randall, chemistry year over year. And so I want to see them continue to build. And, you know, like you said, the Bradley Beal stuff, 
why subtract you know a large majority of what's helped right. you become successful then you bring in Bradley Beal and you have to figure it out all over again you know what I'll I mean also, 100% and yeah. I'll also say that I think that we feel an attachment to these guys right now yeah. because they're homegrown right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mitch homegrown RJ homegrown quickly homegrown um Nilla Keen, I think part of the reason why so many fans love him so much homegrown and they want to see this through see it through uh Julius, you know, no one wanted him. I think a lot of Knicks fans didn't want him and yeah. didn't think that. And now we feel like he's our guy and he's representing us. And right. so on and on it goes. Um, I, I want to see this thing through. And I, I really, I can't stress this enough. I have so much faith in Tom Thibodeau and I see people complaining about the minutes and all this stuff. Like, man, this guy knows. Yeah. This guy yeah. knows. He, he is a proper NBA coach who has put in the time, who has done things the right way. Like, just, I trust Tom Thibodeau. I really do. Yeah. And so I just want to see, I want to, could you imagine, could you imagine come, you know, mid to late May, this team gets in the playoffs and so hopefully there are more fans at MSG yeah. and we're talking about the it's defense electric, chance. Man. I mean, like, I legit get goosebumps. Yeah. I, the NBA is better when the Knicks are better. And by yep. the way, and, and part of the reason why I was happy that, you know, you uh, you represented so well on, on ESPN Radio for the company I work for. Mm-hmm. I'm so tired of the LOL Knicks nonsense. Yeah. You know, I w- they, yeah. they brought me on for the uh, the draft lottery. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah, I remember to, that. I remember, yeah. And, and I knew that they brought me on because there's a very good chance the Knicks weren't going to get the first pick. Right. And they wanted, you know, the crying Knicks fan. <laughs> and in the <laughs> moment, I was pissed. I, in the moment, I was pissed. But then it sunk in. I'm like, the camera's on me right now. Yeah. And I went on this rant about RJ, how he's going to be rookie of the year. And I was wrong about that. But I'm like, no, we need to change our 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 perception. We right. need to change the way people view us. We're not the crying fan at the draft. We're not the. We believe in this team. Yeah. We believe that they're going to turn things around. We want to be positive. We don't want to be the laughing stock of the league anymore. Mm-hmm. And so I'm tired of that. And I just love like slow. Every time the Sports Center or Instagram, uh, in, uh, Sports Center or, or ESPN Instagram account point, post something about the Knicks now, I, I just write apologize. <laughs> I want them. They need to apologize. Put to some respect on our names. Yes. Put Enough of this. Our day, man. They've been taking shots at us for yeah. way too damn long, yeah. and it's time for them to respect Knicks fans again. That that's a fact, man. You know they had the camera on you that night. They had the camera at at our party. Uh, our network of content creators. We had we were at uh, Slattery's Midtown Pub in, in New York City. So the draft coverage when they would pan to New York and the Knicks fans, oh. it was at our event. So we had the ESPN cameras there. Oh, I remember right Marty Smith was the reporter. Yeah, there, Marty right? was yes. there. The, yes, the NASCAR yes. guy, he was there. And uh, you know, listen, we were disappointed when it happened, but obviously with RJ being here and his growth, I'm, I'm happy with RJ here, man. And um, on the trade deadline thing, look, I, I think you know if, if, if small on the margin deals, if, if a Javel McGee's available and, and Mitch is still ailing because we, I, I feel like we need that depth on the front court. Yep. That's the type of move or. A, you know, a Terrence Ross, if you could get him, you know, a, a second round pick and maybe an Iggy. I know he's a, your fellow countryman, but something like that. You know, I wouldn't want to give up Knox or, or give up on one of these young pieces for a little patchwork type of deal. No, nothing like that. No, I, I, I want to see this through and I want to see what Tom. I mean, look at Frank uh, was on the bench. Now he's getting an opportunity. I know the Spurs game wasn't uh, wasn't great, but mm-hmm. like you know, I think we just need to have some patience. At the end of the day, we're only at the midway point of a shortened season. Yeah. So I want to see what he could do with these guys because I think a lot of us had high hopes for these guys. Now I'll say that I'm not as big of a Frank guy as, as Nick's Twitter. Mm-hmm. Like I get it, long win span. <laughs> I get it. He was our guy. Like I think we're a little bit delusional when it comes to his ceiling. Yeah. I'll yeah. just say, I think like the way we talk about, you know, Frank Nilakina, like you would think he's the second coming of LeBron James. <laughs> I mean, I think, I, th- I think we kind of know where he's at, but I get yeah. it. I love it. We want, we want our guy to make it. Um, that being said, I just, I don't see any deal out there and maybe I'm wrong. That's why I'm not Scott Perry and company mm-hmm. uh, that is worth doing to blow this up. Cause this has been so much fun. This yeah. is the team that Knicks fans have been asking for. We haven't been asking for something crazy. We just want a reason to care. We want guys who are going to care and who are going to play meaningful basketball come the spring, and, and hopefully that's where we're headed. True story, man. I think it could be someone that, if they do make a move, it could be someone that no one is really thinking about or a name that's not out there yet. So uh, Bears worth watching. We'll, we'll see what happens, man. Now, on this show, since we have the big card UFC 259 coming up, I thought it was a good idea, man, to get, you know, back in the day, the Knicks were, were known to be brawlers, man. They were known to be fighters. They brought MMA to basketball. Yes. <laughs> Give me a top five. Nick's brawls of all time, top five. Okay, memorable brawls. I'm gonna yeah. you, I'm gonna start with number five and go to number one. Okay. So five Let's being the it. worst. Let's do oh, it. a couple of honorable mentions, yeah. right? Honorable mention: um, Oakley and Barkley. Yeah. 
Oakley and Barkley uh, preseason game in Houston. Remember they threw down. Uh, Oakley was the man, of course. I mean, Tyrone Hill, we remember all the, all the things that he did. That was my lowest moment as a Nick fan, by the way, when they dragged Charles Oakley out of there. That's the one, that's the one issue I had with you. I felt like you were defending Dolan on that one. Just you know a little what? bit. This, this is a thing though. Indefensible. This, this is a thing. I listen. Oak was my guy. Oak was my guy. Was no more. No, still is. Still is. Okay. Still is. Now the interview, it was, it was a 12 round battle, man. It was a 12 round <laughs> battle. You know, I, I try to bring in some objectivity. I yeah. wanted his side of the story. And listen, I just said it was an unfortunate situation, but I feel like there's still three sides to the story. It, I think I think there's, there's three parts to it. It's Dolan sicking the goons on him. Mm-hmm. It's whatever triggered that. And I think it's the, the incident with the security in Oakley itself erupted into something that it shouldn't have erupted into. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, it could have easily been avoided. Yeah. But I'm gonna I'm gonna defend Oak until I find out that he did something criminal. Right. I just gotta defend him till I die because okay. that's our guy. I mean, he gave us so much. He, he did. did so much for this franchise. Um, I I just I love the guy. I love the guy. He so did. anyway, Oak and Barkley. Yeah. Honorable mention. Also honorable mention. Uh, Nick Spurs. Oof. Martin Luther King Day. Yeah. Uh, you know, the infamous uh, Marcus Camby Van Gundy <laughs> moment. On a day where you called for peace. I know, I know. That was unfortunate. Um, <laughs> if Camby would have connected with Van Gundy fully, he would have split him in half, man. I'm telling uh, you. Oh, my that gosh. That was the, the wildest haymaker I've ever saw, man. And I love Van Gundy. And I got the opportunity to work with him a couple times now doing NBA sidelines mm-hmm. for ESPN. And mm-hmm. the guy is just the best. He's Fantastic. everything that you see on TV. He's just like that off camera. Yeah. And it's so, one day I went to lunch before my first game with Breen mm-hmm. and Van Gundy. And like, if you knew what, what I was feeling inside here, right. I am. Yeah. It had know, to be amazing, man. My favorite coach of all time. And one of my favorite broadcasters ever and the voice of the Knicks. And they yeah. could not have been nicer and more welcoming to me. That's I mean, fantastic. true mentions, unbelievable guys. Yeah. So uh, my, my least favorite of my top five mm-hmm. would be uh, 97 PJ Brown, Charlie Ward, uh, Brown with the illegal yeah. slam. Yeah. I mean, a dirty tactic. Dirty. Yeah. You know, I mean, all, all Charlie Ward was doing was boxing him out. Yeah. It was just boxing yeah. him out. A clean box out. We're up three one. That game was was out of hand. But of course, you know the NBA screws the Knicks by by suspending Ewing. Just a couple and, and guys think, stepping over a line I mean, come here on. and there, man. Of course, it's Nothing. a series, man. Just trying to break it up. Yeah. Just trying to break it up. Game six is one of my favorite intros and i can't find it anywhere Mm -hmm. i remember like scott brooks had to play herb williams had to play and at the beginning at msg game six was a friday night they played a a video package with all the guys who were available that night and they said this game is dedicated to all those who believe and i was in my basement in montreal and i was like i believe and i remember morning (laughs) hit a three at the end of that game and that was the one season where they pushed the three they pushed the three-point line in so it would not have been a three any other season and that really bugs me they want game six and then they smoke the Knicks in game seven yeah, so 97 kills me because we were going to be the Bulls in 97 you, you know, know what that, right? Chris Childs came on the show and he really he really lamented the fact that you know because he felt like they could have they could have made some noise against the Bulls yeah. you know so losing all those guys he I think he played well in game six he had a very good game six yeah but, you know we, we lost you and Houston Ward in game six and then Starks and LJ game seven man so hard to bounce back. And it was a wrap yeah it was yeah. a wrap so that that's my least favorite then we go to uh, Nuggets Knicks, um, Ooh, yeah. probably like the last major brawl in the NBA. Yeah. Me- see, this one's a weird one for me because our guy Mello, who I'll defend till the death as well, you know, he's on the other side. That was a source. He gets spot, the bro. cheap shot in. Yeah. Remember the cheap shot, yeah. and he's backpedaling. I was like, ah, Jared Smith man. also involved. Yeah, who gave us great memories. So that was a weird one, but it, that one got ugly. That one yeah. got ugly. In 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 fairness to the orange and blue, like they were kind of showboating. They were pouring it on when it didn't need to be poured on anymore, in my opinion. Yeah. But that whole era was just, I mean, like the Isaiah era, probably my least favorite mix history. So they were running up the score and Isaiah being an old school guy, Chicago guy in the eighties, that would never fly. So he told these guys, Hey, and these guys are trying to 360 in the lane. Like JR was doing, you make a pay. The Knicks had all their scrubs out there on the floor. The, The Nuggets had all their starters. You know, Jr. and Nate get into it, but that Melo thing, like you, man, Melo was my favorite player from Syracuse on down. That night, yep. I was like, oof, you know, cheap shot, and then he's running in the... Oh, he's running like back. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, that was weird. And then it was Jared um, Jeffries chasing him, man. So I'm wondering, yeah. remember when Jared Jeffries blew that that shot attempt against the Celtics in the playoffs, man? Yes. That could have been purpose. That could have been purposeful. Yeah, right. That could have been retribution later on. I wonder on, if they man. ever talked it out, like when they when he joined. When he came when he back. The Knicks. They had yeah. to. They had to, man. They had to have addressed it. I don't know. Maybe I'll get Jared Jeffries on, man. We'll talk yes. about it, man. Hey, yeah, by the way, Jared yeah. Jeffries, I was for Jared Jeffries. He played hard. You know, I know yeah. I knew his ceiling wasn't the highest, mm-hmm. but I got a lot of love for that, you know, 2012, 2013 era of Knicks mm-hmm. basketball. Of course, 2013 was the best that we've had in a long time. But anyway, um, then we get to Nick's sons in the mid 90s. That was a good one, man. Doc Rivers, Kevin Johnson. That was a class. Total madness because they, they, they like they had a little brouhaha. Then they diffused it. And then it like turned into like full blown brouhaha. Greg <laughs> yeah. Anthony gets a cheap shot in. Yeah. Uh, on I think it was Dan Marley with or something. With the Armani he, shirt, man. Yeah, he didn't yeah, care. Yeah, Greg yeah. Anthony was with it, man. He was with it. Oh, uh, I love number fifty, UNLV, yeah. Greg Anthony. Um, that was just madness. And uh, you know, I mean, obviously that's like the height of the big bad Knicks, mm-hmm. Ewing's in his prime, uh, Doc Rivers in his prime. Uh, like I said, Greg Anthony, yeah. you've got Oakley in his prime. I mean, Mason's in the mix mm-hmm, over there. Mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm. that was just – plus, that was, you know, a very good Suns team. Yeah. Kind of crazy that Oakley and Barkley weren't involved. It was the in that one, yeah. In that one, they right. were actually playing Peacemaker in this one. It was yes. really Craig Anthony, Stalks. You know, Stalks, every fight, Stalks is in the middle of Craig. Right. He, he's Love in there. Guy. He's in there to go and toe-to-toe with everybody, man. And, uh, you know, Kevin Johnson was totally out of line. Yeah. Yeah, um, dirty, dirty screen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Doc Rivers was great back in the day. Mm-hmm. Doc Rivers, uh, I went to Knicks camp in 1997 in purchase mm-hmm. from Montreal. My buddy Mo and I went to Knicks camp in 97. Doc Rivers came to talk to us. And I was so excited that like a real life New York Nick was in front of me. Yeah. Mike Saunders as well. I remember Mike yeah, Saunders. Trina, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he was the man. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's number three. Yeah. Number two is uh, Nick's Bulls, of course. Ooh, um, yeah. Jordan's out. Uh, Derek Harper, the man, 94, 94. Yep. Yep. Jojo English, the mm-hmm. scrub. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they get man. into that thing right in front of David Stern. Right in, in front the, of David Stern. Man. Yeah. The one thing I forgot to check beforehand was, was that the same game as the Tony Kukoc shot? Was that the, um, the same series? Yeah, that was the same series. Same... That was 100%. That was one that when Pippen didn't want to come back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the same series. I don't know if it was that game. That was game three. I don't remember it, it if might, it was It might have game. even been that game. But anyway, yeah. crazy series. We get over the hump. Um, Bulls are trying to act, you know, all tough without their fearless leader. Mm-hmm. Derek Harper, one of my favorite. Me too. You know, Knicks players. Same. That was a huge trade. Mm-hmm. Number 11 from Illinois. Um, first NBA sideline game that I ever did was in Dallas. Nice. And I was at the urinal right next to Derek Harper. And he's like, <laughs> what's up, man? I'm like, you're fucking Derek Harper, man. <laughs> Shit. I'm sorry for swearing. Was, the, was that bad? No, no, you're good, man. Go ahead. Go okay. Ahead. Yeah, I yeah. never swear. Oh, but this okay, is what okay. the Knicks do to me. This hey, is what the Knicks do to me. Like, wow, Derek passion, Harper. Man. Derek Harper. Remember when they say the like best. that? So, the best. Yeah, it was great. It was yeah. great. What a great uh, rivalry that was. So that's number two. Yeah. And then number one. Uh, Nick's Heat 98 Oof. when our guy Jeff JVG gets in there grab and, and and I loved it because it was morning and LJ it was the two former Hornets it's like the dying seconds of the game yeah. and and LJ's not taking his crap anymore yeah. and there's our guy in the Jeff Van Gundy in the mix in, in, man in the mix, in the mix. Neither, the guy neither guy connecting neither guy connecting it's Van neither Gundy guy connecting. <laughs> yeah I mean look you know, none of these fights had good technique. Let's be honest. Like, if you want to see bad fights, you go watch an NBA fight. Yeah, yeah. Most and and if you ever want to see, like, it's amazing to me when you watch NBA players hit the bag. How you know uncoordinated they are. It's yeah. like they're so talented, they're so athletic, and then you see them put on boxing gloves, and it's like, what? How are you so stiff? It's amazing. And then conversely, you ever see an MMA fighter try to play basketball, and it's, it's, it's you know, worse. it's comical as well. <laughs> but that one to me was just you know so memorable. Plus. You know, it also brings back good memories. 98 was a great um, run for us because we were the seventh seed. Mm-hmm. No one thought that we'd be able to beat the Heat, mm-hmm. the two seed. And then, of course, 99, eight seed. They're the, yeah. the one seed. But I just love why we will always defend Jeff is because, you know, that right there, right? He, yeah. he was a true New Yorker. He got in the mix. He defended his guys till yeah. the death. He loved fought it. for them on the court, off the court, everything, man. That was my coach. Even when, you know, we made the Thibodeau high, I said, let's talk to Jeff. You know, Jeff was my first choice. Not going to lie. Jeff was my first choice. I don't blame and you. it's for that reason, man. It's for that. A lot of people say, oh, well, he left him high and dry, you know, when he when he just walked away. 
I said, look, man, he was losing all his hair. Look at all the stress. Right. He couldn't he couldn't deal with it. I know? used to love those post-game scrums where he's drinking the, the Diet Coke yeah. and he's got the massive bags <laughs> under his eyes and you could just see the hair disappearing. <laughs> But he one was by just, one, man. Oh, he's yeah. such, I went into like a, uh, like this rabbit hole recently where mm-hmm. I was trying to find the press conference or the scrum when, when he resigned, yeah. couldn't find it, but then stumbled upon the day he was hired against mm-hmm. Philly. Mm-hmm. Remember the, the, yeah. the first yeah, game where they got right blown in. out yeah, yeah. and then they, they ended up beating the 72 and 10 bulls on mm-hmm. the Sunday afternoon um, on NBC. And it's just, it's just amazing to like go back and watch some of those clips of young yeah. Jeff and, MSG with Johnny Hoops and Marv Albert yeah, and yeah. all this stuff, man. Oh, the memories that it gives me, like very few things make me happier than trying to relive those times. Tr- tremendous. And then the other thing on Van Gundy was the fact that that whole 99 run, we remembered as a Cinderella run, his head yep. was on the chopping block. Yep. You know, that team did not play well. They struggled. There was a lot of ups and downs, a lot of lows, injuries. He was going to get fired. 100%. He was going to get fired and Phil Jackson was was angling for the job. There you, you go. Know? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the first playoff game I ever went to was game three, second round, 99 against the Hawks. Mm-hmm. And that's the Chris Dudley game. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the game on a Saturday afternoon, the Garden was chanting Jeff and Gundy because yep, yep. we all knew what was up and we wanted him to stay. I mean, the fact that they even made the playoffs at that point was crazy. They beat the Heat. We knew that they were going to smoke the Hawks. They yeah, were, yeah. They, were yeah, like, they were yeah. overrated as mm-hmm. a, I think they time. were a four seed or a five seed because mm-hmm. we were the eight seed. We the eight, and yeah. then it was just magical stuff. Um, and then one of my favorite series ever is that Easter, like no one thought they'd beat the Pacers yeah. in the Eastern Conference Finals. Right. Remember, remember game six, mm-hmm. LJ going out and Houston, you know, doing that doing in that, honor yeah, of this guy. Yeah. I mean, it was just, and, and Ewing getting injured. I think game two with the Achilles. Yeah, I mean, the Achilles, this man. is great stuff. This is great it's, stuff. It's just, had we I'm had scared. Ewing in 99, we would be in the Spurs. I'll believe that till we would have definitely given him a better run, no doubt. And yeah. healthy LJ, man, you know LJ, LJ hurting, yeah. his, hurting his knee. I mean, I think in a normal, you know, NBA season, he probably wouldn't even have played because right. that knee injury was pretty serious. You know, it's just a just a rough rough situation, man. But like you said, you know, just those stories, man, that that heightened your passion as a fan, and and here we are today, man. And this is why we continue to, you know, like. Again, going back to the Max thing, but it's anyone who says that, like, why do you do this? Why do you do this? Mm-hmm. I'm not a Nick fan because of James Dolan. Right. You know what I mean? I'm, that's not why I got into this. Yeah. Um, I'm not a Nick fan because of uh, this coach or that coach. You know, what has made me even a greater Nick fan now is I'm a dad now. And, you know, my middle son in particular, he's seven. His name is Walter. By the way, one of the reasons why I called him Walter nice. is because of Clyde. Nice, nice. Uh, I actually pitched middle name being Clyde, but I got nice. overruled on that one. But, um, you know, I, I, I have noticed he's really like, he's asking me every morning now, are they mm-hmm. playing tonight? Mm-hmm, What's mm-hmm. The, so now they're 18 and 17. What well, he's doing like the math. And I'm like, nice. I'm seeing at around the same age that it happened to it's me. Building. I'm seeing it's it happen to him. Yeah. And he's, he, he, like, he saw Derek Rose hit the buzzer beater on uh, what was it? Sun- Saturday night against the Pacers mm-hmm. at the end of the first half. Yeah, right, and right. he's like, Oh, he's my favorite player now. And it's like, That's this is how cool, kids, man. this is how their mind yeah, work. Right. Yeah. Like, Oh, I saw him do something. He's like, when I saw Starks dunk, I'm like, this is my guy. That's right. Yeah, so yeah. now I get to do it with him all over again. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking like, Oh, thank God. The bad, the bad years were before my kids were born. Imagine they go like on a run now for the next 10 years. Like mm-hmm. when I was his age, I'm just so excited to take him to the garden and, and he can experience that as well. And it's just almost made me into a bigger fan this year because I'm getting to experience it as a dad. Uh, that's a beautiful feeling, man, because the fandom is starting to form inside of him and, and it's yes. a thing that you guys can connect on. You know, my son, he's uh, he's two going on three now, and that's something that, you know, I'm trying to get him into a little by little as well. It so will take some time. Thing, it will man. take some time. Like yeah. my kids were born. My oldest was born during uh, Lynn Sanity. Okay. And so okay. that was very exciting. So the first jersey I got him was a Lynn jersey. Mm-hmm. Crazy story. I got him like a, a Lynn onesie. The kid's like a month old. Mm-hmm. And I was so excited to have a son that I can actually give a Knicks jersey to that he was wearing it. My wife is breastfeeding. I take a picture. I'm so excited. I don't realize <laughs> that he's off the breast. And I texted it to all my friends. And, and they brought me back and they're like, yo. <laughs> and I was so fixated on the jersey yeah, yeah, that my yeah. I had a son that was wearing a Knicks jersey that I forgot. I didn't pay attention that my wife was exposed. 
and and luckily she didn't mind she was like i get it but yeah, my yeah. friends were all like yo you do realize what you just sent us right i was like i did not realize that honestly i didn't i was all just for the dicks, man. All for number the dicks, 17 man. it was right there i was like so excited that that's hilarious man <laughs> that is hilarious um and now shifted to 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 the mma side and, and yeah. going on your career you know you're now at espn but it was a rocky journey for you you know getting yes. into this and and pursuing your passion you had a lot of highs a lot of lows and some setbacks in between um what have been you know the the lessons that that you've learned what what is the things that have stuck most with you as you kind of um ascend yep. on your journey the 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 main thing that comes to mind is you know don't feel sorry for yourself don't lick your wounds there are going to be many 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 setbacks and there are going to be people who doubt you who are going to try to bring you down who are going to try to hurt you and uh they win if you feel sorry for yourself and you say, ah, you know what, maybe I'm not good enough. I'm going to quit because there have been definitely a lot of times where I could have just packed it up and went home. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you, if you work hard, if you remain professional, if you treat people the right way, if you work hard, if you outwork everyone, like I keep going back to that because it's the truth. And, you know, you, you become, you know, in my profession, one of the things that helped me was I was, um, I was very much a believer that you need to be trustworthy for the athlete. So like if someone calls me up and tells me something off the rec record, mm -hmm. that is going in the vault. I will never break that trust. Mm -hmm. And so they start to notice that and then they'll come to you with more things and they know that you're going to take care of them when they have something big to announce or they want to talk about something or they're going through some tough times and they want to do an interview with someone who's going to, you know, be respectful. So all these things um, end up working, you know, in your favor if you do things the right way. But uh, yeah, there have definitely been setbacks, but I just, you know, I really wanted this badly and I still feel like I haven't made it just yet. I know mm -hmm. some people will be like, oh, you made it. You're at ESPN. I still feel like I'm, you know, one, ground. one thing away from it all going down, one thing away from, you know, uh, this dream coming to an end. And, um, you know, I'm just trying to make the most of it, but the, the, the biggest thing is, cause there's definitely been times where I felt sorry for myself and I've had to like snap out of it and be like, no, I'm going to prove these people wrong. I'm going to make it, I'm going to succeed. And, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't say that, you know, the first time I got to do sidelines mm -hmm. when people told me that, you know, you're done and, or you're not going to make it. And like, here I am at an a game mm -hmm. on ESPN, or here I am Christmas day on ABC and I'm the freak. I like, I don't belong here. It's mm. Breen, Van Gundy and Helwani. Like how the hell did I end up here? <laughs> I was just a kid watching MSG network who would wait, you know, I would wait till 1130 at night because I couldn't get the WFAN post game show mm -hmm. back home in Canada. Right. But at nighttime, late at night, the signal would, when you would get the signal, right? I would get yeah, the signal yeah, and I would yeah. listen to the yeah. post game. Yeah. And I like, that's me. I'm just a, I'm just a fan, man. I just like, I, I should not be here. And somehow I made it here. So I don't screw this up and don't let other people win. And so I've just tried to have that mentality that fighter's mentality and yeah. i just pray and hope that it continues for many years that's so man and maybe that goes all the way back to when you, you your brothers were teasing you about the knicks and the x-men man maybe all that adversity for sure. was building you up to be prepared absolutely for you are right and that's now. why i love these guys man because yeah. back then you know they were the underdogs and they were the fighters and they were the ones that didn't give up and yes it didn't go their way but i i identified with that man like i remember mm -hmm. this is like this is crazy stuff that i would do the 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 afternoon that Ewing missed the finger roll, mm -hmm. I was invited to a bar mitzvah. I, I was in the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. You know what a bar mitzvah yeah, is, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, I've been to plenty out here in Long Island. I've been to plenty, man. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. New York, everyone knows. Mm -hmm. So I went to one of my uh, magazines and I took a, an, I cut out a Knicks logo and I taped it on my yarmulke. <laughs> and I was just like, I'm going to be proud that I'm a Knicks fan. I'm going to go there, even though we're, we're, we're feeling at our lowest right now. Yeah. And I remember, I think it was 90. Was it 98? We lost to the Pacers. I think we lost to the Pacers in 98. Did we lose to the Pacers? Or maybe 90? No, no. Yeah, 98, we lost to the Pacers. Yeah. And um, after the Heat series, mm -hmm. and these kids were teasing me. Oh, Knicks are never going to win. Ewing's never going to win. I took a kid's head, no joke, and I smashed it into the lockers, and I got sent to the principal's office because I was just going to fight for my guys. Yeah, yeah, like, that's yeah. the kind of person that I am. So I'll be damned if someone's going to take my career away from me. I'm going to fight. I have that in me. And uh, yeah, that that I think that's what connected me to those guys because I just love the way they the were scrapping man. all the time. Toughness, toughness, man. Um, Dana White, pre yes. president of, of UFC. Uh, you've covered him. You guys had a cordial relationship a along your journey. Now it's been kind of you know cantankerous. W what's happened there, and and where are you guys at now? Uh, I would say now we have a non-existent relationship. You know, mm. I don't talk to him. He doesn't talk to me. We haven't really talked to be honest, in five years, since 2016, mm -hmm. since they banned me. Mm -hmm. um, 
And, you know, it's unfortunate, you know, I, I would say at one point it was even more than cordial. Mm -hmm. Like we were, we were actually on really great terms, mm -hmm. but over time, you know, everyone always asks me what happened, what happened? What's mm -hmm. the story? There is no story mm -hmm. just over time. You know, uh, he and the brass didn't like that I would report on or talk about things that they didn't want talked about in the media. Now I'm talking about like the most benign stuff. I'm talking about, you know, free agency mm -hmm. in our sport because it's different than in, in the other sports or unions or, you know, fighter pay. And this is the stuff that they don't want the media to talk about. But I don't talk about it in an unfair or unethical way. I don't take cheap shots. I really try my best to be professional and down the middle and all this stuff. I don't talk about, you know, salacious things. They just didn't like that. So over time, they weren't happy with it. Um, they they got me fired from Fox. Mm. Um, the McGregor... They just, um Floyd, so you were, you were banned from there too. I was right? gonna, that was the following yeah. year. I was going to do that. They didn't let me do that. But you know, again, as I was alluding to prior, uh, I didn't. You know, I could have said, "Hey, like Floyd and and uh, and Connor, that fight, Maymac." Mm -hmm. um, I was bummed. I was devastated. I was supposed to be a part of the Showtime team and the mm -hmm. buildup to the fight, and maybe on Fight Night as well. This was a huge opportunity for me, and I find out the day of the first press conference that they have to remove me. I'm already, I'm in LA. I, I live in New York. I fly to LA overnight. I'm at the Staples center mm -hmm. right outside it. And they tell me, I'm sorry, you can't do it because you know, they raised the stink. Mm -hmm. So I could have gone back to my hotel room and cried or, or, or felt sorry for myself. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to cover this fight better than any single person in the world. And I feel like it isn't a bold statement to say that I kicked everyone's ass in the buildup to that fight, including ESPN, who I did not work for at the time. Mm -hmm. Like, I just wanted to outwork everyone and prove to them that they made a huge mistake. And that's just kind of been the mentality that I've had. Would I like for it to end and, and us to be on better terms? Sure. But I don't think it has held me back or, you know, has put me in a tough spot. I mean, in the midst of all this, I got hired by ESPN and, yeah. and they knew where the relationship was at. So. Right. I'm fine. As long, as long as I can continue to cover the sport and, and make a living and support my family, then I can't complain. Hey, it's so that Knicks mentality, man. It's put you where, right. you where you are, man. No doubt about it. Listen, man, I thought this was a fantastic conversation. I've been trying to get Thank you on the show for ages. I'm, I'm glad we finally connected. You never and, asked. Uh, I did. I did way back. I way you back. Did? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think you had a lot going on. So you're saying, DM, you know, DM or? DM. or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I need to go back into the archives here. All, all good, man. All good. We made yo, it when happen. I saw it, I was like, "I'm, uh, yo, where have you been?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, we made it happen. Oh, man. I see it here. Yeah. What What was the date on that, man? Give us the date, man. I July fifth. Okay, but listen, July fifth, twenty twenty. Yeah. I mean, we're talking like you know five months ago. We're yeah. not talking years here. But, <laughs> hey, okay, fine. Well, we, we've grown considerably since then. You know, you and have. A lot, That's a my lot bad. You know what? That was that was right before a huge pay per view. That, July that 5th, was it. it was July eleventh. It was the big Fight Island debut and right, all that. So right, there was a right. lot of going on. Yeah. And you probably had nothing going on because like the bubble hadn't started. So yeah. you were just coming to me as like your tenth. <laughs> you know, get like you were just like, oh, who who can I get? Let's see what Ariel's up to. That yeah, is, Childs is done. <laughs> X Men is done. Oak, you know. We, like you probably talk to everyone and like okay fine we'll throw them a bone but let me tell you something i just want to yeah. clear something up here real mm -hmm, quick mm -hmm. very fast you know i get these trolls online to tell me like oh in 2019 you know we saw you all excited about the raptors let me explain something very clearly okay, yeah. right now. air them out air them out man go ahead bro i'm canadian all right yeah. and and the toronto raptors in 2019 weren't playing for the city of toronto they were playing for the country of canada mm -hmm. now my knicks my knicks were at that point you know not in a great spot i was happy for my fellow countrymen yeah. i was happy for my friends who want i'm allowed to be happy for other people when i'm not <laughs> factoring into things but rest assured just like in 2000 and 2001 when we played the raptors in the playoffs yeah. that I will forever be orange and blue and other people want to bring up the Chris Tapps trade because I did, I tweeted January 31st, mm -hmm. 2000, I think 19, when they traded Chris Tapps, mm -hmm. I said, this is my last day as a Knicks fan. I said mm -hmm. it, it's out there. The mm -hmm. tweet is out there. I didn't mm -hmm. delete on it on the record on the, but guess what? I say to everyone who sends me that screen grab, show the one from 24 hours later, because I woke up the next day. I was in Gilroy, California, about to interview <laughs> Daniel Cormier for E60 piece. And I yeah. said, you know what? I thought of it and I'm orange and blue till I Oof. die. But the haters right, don't put that no, out. No, 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 They don't give you that credit. They don't am give I you allowed to feel bad for yeah. a day? Yeah. yeah. After everything we've been through, am I allowed to feel down it's, for just a day? It, it's all good, man. And then on the Raptors thing, listen, this is your fellow countrymen. You know, it's bigger. It's bigger than basketball. It's bigger than the Raptors. It's I was happy for them, but don't think for a second yeah. that if it comes down to Eastern Conference Final, uh, Jurassic 
Jurassic Park versus the Mecca yeah. that I'm not on the front lines, <laughs> you know, at the Mecca. Don't Let's think go. for a second that I'm not bleeding orange and blue if you cut me open right now till I die. No okay, doubt. till I die. No doubt. And so I just wanted to clear that up on this platform once and for all. I see all the trolls. I know they're trying to <laughs> rattle me, but I have been there since 1990. And you can all test me. You can ask me anything you want about the 90s Knicks, about the 2000s Knicks. Heck, we could talk about the freaking Kenny Skywalker Knicks. Oof. We could talk about Willis Reed in 1973. We could talk about David Battle Busher and Dick McGuire and, and Earl the Pearl and Black Jesus and Walt <laughs> Clyde Frazier in 1970 walking out. Here comes Willis and the crowd is going wild. Do not That's test it. me about May 8th, yeah, 1970 true, and what transpired on that man. day. Till I die man. in my heart. Absolutely no questions asked. Good stuff, man. Well, next time we get you on the show, you got to come on for post game. We got to take calls and 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 wrap up. I would love to. Game, man. I would love to. Absolutely. I guess I got to build up to it. I thought this was the post game, and then I heard I was the pre taped raw, you know, before the game. But that's all good. That's all good. I'll work my way up. That's all good. We'll, we'll get it going, man. But Ariel, def- definitely appreciate the time, man. Great conversation, bro. Thanks my man, again. thank you. Thank you yeah, for having man. me. Enjoy Keep the up fight the great this work. weekend, man. Keep representing. Thank you. We'll do, man. We'll do. Let's get it going. Take care, bro. You too. Take care, man. man. Yep. Thank you.